Before the latest and biggest scientific study on training frequency was preprinted, I got the chance to sit down with the lead researcher, Josh Pelland, and get the exclusive scoop and interview. In their meta-analysis, they looked at the results of 34 studies on muscle growth and 66 studies on strength. The results of a meta-analysis are considered some of the strongest evidence out there since they combine different studies, creating a much larger sample size than any single study could have. Higher frequencies appear to have a neutral to slightly positive effect at a given training volume. So if you're doing 10 sets for a given muscle, if you were to do all of those sets in one session versus all of those sets spread across two sessions, so five sets per session, spreading it across two sessions might have a positive effect, but it's probably not a primary training variable or something you need to overly stress about. Just like for training volume, fractional frequency seemed to most accurately predict muscle growth. For your biceps, for example, counting back work as half a weekly session made more sense or was more truthful than counting it either as no bicep training whatsoever or just as good as an actual bicep training session. If you look at their analysis closely, there may or may not be a benefit to training with higher frequencies. At the very least, the effect is very small. If we had to create a hierarchy of effects, how many sets you do, aka how much volume you do, and how close to failure each set is taken, aka proximity to failure, are far more important than training frequency. You can think of training volume, proximity to failure, and training frequency in a similar way as you do protein. The main thing to pay attention to with protein is intaking a sufficient amount each day. How many meals you split that protein into across the day matters much, much less. Similarly, the main thing to pay attention to with training is to perform a sufficient dose, volume and proximity to failure. Not so much how you distribute that across the week. So how often should you train a muscle group to maximize its growth? The answer is likely at least twice a week, which aligns well with my video on the best routine, but it may depend on how much volume you're doing. In fact, there may be a benefit to training a bit more often if you're performing a lot of volume, which based on our previous interview, you likely should. Now it's important to keep in mind that a lot of the research we have is not clustered around those high volumes. So it might be the case that higher frequencies become more and more important as you do higher and higher volumes. We just can't say for sure right now. As soon as I got the results from this latest meta-analysis, I went to MyoAdapt and updated how the app works. That is the point of MyoAdapt, taking the latest scientific research and applying it to your training, giving you a coach in your pocket. MyoAdapt is the best training app out there. It's going to be launched in the next few months, so go to myoadapt.com and sign up to be notified when it gets released. It'll create a truly individualized program for you based on your schedule, your time constraints, your goals, and much more. Now, we don't have any research yet looking at really high volumes in conjunction with really high training frequencies, but that is where high frequencies would theoretically be beneficial. While this hasn't been preprinted or published yet, another upcoming analysis has found strongly diminishing returns for every additional set you do in a given workout for building muscle. With some theory crafting, that would suggest that spreading out, say, 30 weekly sets for a given muscle across two to three workouts in a week would result in more muscle growth compared to just doing it in a single session. Where higher frequency might really shine is when it practically allows you to get more volume in, especially if you're specializing a muscle group or two. My colleague Jake Remmer did a similar analysis on per session volume, and some of the insights from that might indicate that you could, you could start to see stronger diminishing returns with very high volumes within a given session. So if you're trying to do 30 to 40 sets for a given muscle, which is very high volumes in my opinion, it would be really hard to do that in one session, and it might be hard to do even in two sessions. So at that point, I would start to look towards something like a, uh, a daily training program or a four or five time per week training program for that muscle. Now, you might be saying, there's no way I can train that often. I'll overtrain. Once again, I urge you to think of frequency more as a distribution of training. Provided you keep the number of weekly sets you perform the same, Spreading out a given number of sets over more days should not make you overtrain. And importantly, if you'll allow me to put my scientist hat on, instances of true overtraining syndrome are remarkably rare. That's not to say you can't overdo it. 
But even up to 30 to 40 weekly sets increases growth. It's probably not that easy to overtrain. So what split or routine should you be following? The answer there is any split or routine that in my opinion allows you to train a muscle twice a week or more. That could be an upper lower split performed four days a week or six days a week, wherein you're training each muscle two to three times a week. It could be a push-pull legs routine performed six days a week, wherein you train each major muscle twice a week. However, if you're performing higher training volumes, say 20 or more sets per week, that is where I see a point to potentially going past twice a week. Maybe start experimenting with three times a week per muscle, or maybe even four or more. In fact, there's nothing magical about an upper lower split or push pull leg split. You can go crazy. You can do a push pull legs upper lower five day split. It still gets you that two times a week frequency, but it's a bit more fun. Or you can go with a full body split performed at least twice a week. Or if you're like me, do it with traditional programs and routines altogether and just program each muscle group across the week individually. I'll generally create a table of training days of the week and muscle groups and just spread out the training across the week, trying to train each muscle at least twice and allowing for as much recovery between each instance as possible. Your training doesn't need to neatly fit into a preconceived split or routine. Now, I didn't mention body part splits. What about those? Are they suboptimal since they only allow a muscle group to be trained once in a given training week? I do think I would give some credence to bro splits, especially if each muscle is getting hit indirectly another time throughout the week. But going from one to two direct exposures per week for a given muscle is probably not going to be a bad thing. And if it fits within your split, or if you're choosing between two splits, one is one time per week frequency, one is two times per week frequency. If I had to hedge my bets, I'd hedge it towards two times per week. But again, I, I can't say with a ton of confidence that's going to be the case. But again, neutral to, to slightly positive effect there. To make a traditional five-day body part split more effective, simply pair back with triceps, chest with biceps, perform some compound movements on arm day, and add some leg work on shoulder day. This will allow all major muscle groups to be trained one and a half to two times a week, making it substantially more effective, especially with higher volumes. Just like our great ancestors, I will build a pyramid. Not the nerdy takes decades to build and looks kind of goofy at the end. The this is how to get jacked kind. Level one, if you want to get good muscle growth, you can train a muscle just once a week and run a body part split. You'll get solid muscle growth, but not your best, especially with higher volumes. Level two, if you want really good growth, you can train a muscle two to three times a week. This works well at moderate-ish volumes of 10 to 25 sets per week per muscle, and is where push-pull legs and upper-lower splits come in. Level three, you're the apex predator. You've ascended to a higher plane of existence, and your brain is no longer constrained to traditional training routines. If you're performing high training volumes, over 25 sets per week for a given muscle, you may see your best muscle growth training each muscle group three workouts a week or more. The science isn't quite there yet to confirm this beyond a shadow of a doubt, but it seems like a good bet. Since I know at least two or three of my viewers are powerlifters, here are the strength results as well. The relationship between training frequency and strength outcomes was similar to that of hypertrophy, but slightly more positive. In other words, while frequency doesn't really improve hypertrophy all that much, there is a bit more of an effect with strength. The more often you train a given movement pattern, the more strength gains you might expect. Cool. Awesome. Josh, you wrote down the results very well. Where can people find your channel or find you online, find your research? Since you're already on YouTube, probably check out our YouTube channel, Data Driven Strength. You can find me on Instagram, josh.datadrivenstrength, and you can check out our website, data-drivenstrength.com. If you got this far, I know this video carried some interesting practical implications for your own training. So if there's anything you feel I didn't fully explain or you don't understand fully yet, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond to at least some of the comments. If you'd like to rock the same training drip as I do, go to rascalapparel.com and use code WOLF to support your boy and also get some sick drip. Yeah, bussin' for real for real.